Hi, today we're going to talk about chapter 7, um, the second section, I'm calling it 7B, um, and this is the diagramming categorical statements. Um, last video you saw, um, 7A, talked about the different types of categorical statements, um, how to translate them, and kind of what we call them. Um, it's another one of those sessions where uh, Dr. Vaughn says, oh, here's the stuff that we use with Greek logic. Um, it doesn't make a big deal of it, and then we use it the whole rest of the, of the chapter. Uh, that's the same thing here. I have this up here. Um, the A statements are universal affirmative, and this is our, sorry, I'm going to change colors. This is our all S R P. The E statement, universal negative, no S R P. And then we have our particular affirmative, our I statement, some S R P. Some S R P. Um, particular negative, some S R not P. So we already know these things, right? We translate, um, and just as a reminder, um, on page, sorry, on page 239 in the fifth edition is a list of some very common, very normal um, ways we say these things in English, but this is what they translate to. You always have to translate your statements into the standard form. Um, so that we can then look at them on graphs and things and figure out whether they're valid or not. That's what we're working towards. Um, today we're going to get the first step in that, and that is what do these four sentences really look like when we diagram them? Um, and we're not talking, you know, like diagram sentences or join the, the truth tables. We're talking about Venn diagrams, which is a series of circles. Um, and you've probably seen these um, in algebra class and a little bit of geometry maybe. Um, and we're going to use them in a slightly different way than we use them in math. Um, although understanding how they work in math can help you understand this. Um, so if you're having trouble or you need somebody else to say this in a different way when we're done with this thing, um, don't forget about purplemath.com. Um, it's a very fun, I know, yeah, fun. Um, purplemath.com will give you another way to look at Venn diagrams, how we draw them, what they say, what they mean. A few more things than what we're actually going to touch on in class um, because we only need to do so much with them this time. Um, but just some extra things to think about, some different ways of looking at them. Um, there's all kinds of math things on Purple Math. Um, say you forget how to do your quadratic equations or whatever, you can look it up. They give you some um, self-grading exercises to do. Um, so you can walk through them like a homework assignment and look at them and then they'll tell you whether you got them right and what you did wrong and how to go back and do it again. Um, that's a really good site. Anything from 2 plus 2 is 4 to calculus. Um, anything that you get in K through 12. Um, lots of times I've, I've sent students there when they have trouble with all kinds of things. But anyway, they do some Venn diagrams really well. So back to our little spot here. When I'm looking at Venn diagrams, again, it's a series of circles, and in this case, it's two circles, okay? Um, I am not a freehand artist, so they won't be the same size, but they always start out like that, okay? Two overlapping circles, make sure they have some overlap here in the middle so you can do things with it, and all four of them are going to look the same when they start. Every time we draw that diagram, we start with S and P overlap. When we get to seven C, um, the next step in this, we'll, we'll add a third circle, but that's as far as we get. So all SRP, okay, um, this is probably the hardest one because what I'm going to do is, when I'm looking at all SRP, okay, I have two sets of folks. One set is a sailboat group, okay, they like to go sailboating, that's all they want to do. The other group, my P group, is a paddle boat folks. They're not up for sailing, sailing, they're going to use their feet, right? They're going to get a workout here this way. Um, and so I have a bunch of sailboat people. I have a bunch of paddleboat people. None of the sailboat people like to paddleboat, okay? Um, sorry, all of the sailboat people like to paddleboat, okay? So we have all S. All my sailboat people are also paddleboat people, okay? So if I say, who are the paddleboat people? They're all going to crowd into this little eyeball section, okay? 
So this whole section here is empty. Now, okay, it's empty, so why did I color it in? I have two different ways of looking at this. Um, I call it looking at the floor. Um, when I was first learning this, I had to come up with some sort of visual so I can, because that's how I learn things, um, so I could remember um, that I'm coloring what's not there. Of course, I also write that above in my notes. Color what's not there. Color the empty spot. Um, the empty spot here, if I'm looking at the floor, think of it this way. I have a bunch of friends who are sailboat people and paddleboat people, and we're in this hotel lobby. Okay, you know, hotels have that wild, weird-looking carpet, um, basically to hide any stains they get. And so, I'm looking down from a balcony. Here's all these folks. I'm like, okay, all pretend, all you sailboat people, you want to be paddleboat people too, but you have to stay within your circle. And so they all crowd in here. So this little part here is very, very full. This part's empty, so I can see that ugly carpet. Okay, I can see the floor. I had a student a couple semesters ago who said, here's how I think of it. There are three rooms, okay? They're adjoining rooms, like they have doors in between them. And so the far room is all the sailboat people. The other far room is all the paddleboat people. The room in the middle is where both, they don't talk to each other, basically. And so because all the sailboat people are in the middle room, the lights are off in that room. We don't need that room, so we turn the lights off. Um, whichever way or your own version of that helps you understand and remember that we're drawing, we're coloring in the part that's empty. Okay, when we're talking about our universals, okay, that's the big deal up here. We color in the empty. We're going to do something slightly different when we get down here. So we have two different sets of rules. Now, if I'm looking at my no SRP, draw my two circles again, label them. Okay, salt and pepper SRP. Um, no SRP. None of my sailboat people want to be paddleboat people. So the room that's empty, or the floor I can see, is this eyeball section in the middle. It looks like an eyeball, right? Um, so that's my that's my drawing. The other thing is whether it makes sense every day to us or not, this is just how it's done. Okay? This is what all SRP looks like, whether we like it or not. Okay, it's one of those yes sir kind of things. This is what no SRP looks like every single time. Okay, whether we like it or not, that's what it looks like. Um, so those are how those work. Now the sum SRP is slightly different, of course. Okay. If I say sum, what I really mean is at least one. At least one S is a P. Okay, so to represent that at least one, I draw an S. Okay, some SRP. There's at least one of my sailboat people who wants to be a paddleboat person, so she's in there. I can draw my X anywhere in that eyeball section. Doesn't matter. Okay, and that's going to come in handy later. So the rule for my universal is color in the empty. My rule for the particular is x the 1. Okay, it's at least 1. So we put an x for the 1-ness. We mark the place where there is somebody. Some s are not p. I have at least one sailboat person who does not want to be a paddleboat person, so their X is out here. Okay, again, sum is at least one, and so we have this kind of different way of looking at things. Here is, this is just what some SRP looks like. We have an X in the center section to overlap. Some S are not P, my O sentence has an X outside of that eyeball section, okay? And that's pretty much what we have, right? So think about it this way. If I say all cats are carnivores, go back to our original, that sentence looks like this because it's an A sentence, it's a universal affirmative, it's an all SRP, and that's what it always, always, always looks like. If I say some cats are not carnivores, this is what it looks like every single time. Okay, so any sentence that translates into some S are not P 
this is the strap. Okay. Now, what I want you to do before you go on is, here in a second, just pause, or look at page, is that right up there? No, page 244. Okay. On page 244 is the same thing I have here. Here's your four basic parts. I want you to put this on a new 3x5 card. Remember in Chapter 6, we made a little cheat card that had the four truth tables on it. Well, here is your four cheat sheets. Try to put this all on one side because I'm going to have you put a couple other things on the other side before we get to the end of the chapter. So take a break, get out your 3x5 card, and make this little cheat sheet. Um, it'll help you greatly when you're doing homework. Um, your alternative thing, if you don't have a 3x5 card and you don't want to do that, is to tab or mark somehow page 244 so you can flip back and look at it. Um, much easier, much better than trying to always remember. I still look at my cheat card. I have mine removed. Okay, so that's what that part is. We're going to move on here in just a sec. Um, I want to show you a couple of other things to do with the two-part bubbles. Okay, so these are always correct. They always look this way. Regardless of what I started out with, my translation has to be one of these four sentences and then one of these four matching graphs. Okay? Do I have enough space? Uh, I might have enough space. I'm going to make this go away just this and you guys up here so you just have that. Okay? When we're talking about equivalence, Okay. Equivalence means it's mostly equal to. Okay, It's not a straight equal sign. It's got the little wavy line on top. Which means it's congruent is probably the other word you've heard. Um, when we look at these, the arrangement might be a little bit different. Maybe my P comes first. Maybe I've got a non-something. Anyway, it, it translates out to the same thing looks the same on a graph, okay? Now, if I'm looking at my four sentences here, and I'm going to do, I'm going to find out if all S R P is the same, put a little colon there, is the same as all P R S, okay? So I'm going to look at my little bubbles. I'm going to draw my bubbles, okay? Same order each time, okay? Otherwise, I could have all kinds of answers, right? Okay, so my two bubbles look the same. All SRP, I look at my little cheat card, and it looks like this, okay? Because all of my S folks are crowded into the lower to the middle. Now, if I say all P are S, all of my P folks are crowded in there. So this side is empty. Okay. These are not equivalent. They're mirror images of each other. Okay, So they're not the same thing. The graphs have to look exactly alike in order for us to count it as equivalent. And the exercises in 7.5 are going to run you through a bunch of those. Okay, So let's look at these other four. So if I do, that's my A, if I do the E, no SRP, and then no P, R, S, draw my bubbles, my off-sided bubbles. It's windy, so it won't just get laundry. Okay, so no SRP always looks like this because there's no S that wants to be a P. So if likewise I have no P's that want to be S, they're all crowded over here, Nobody's in the middle room. Okay, so these are equivalent. Yes. Okay. Look at I. Some S R P. Some P R S. Write them up. I should have made it a little smaller so I could get a quarter of these on an I, but I'm just going to so some SRP has the X in the middle. Some PRS would have the X in the middle as well. So they're good. They're a yes. Okay. 
And you can guess with the O, it's going to not be equivalent. So, if my sum SRP, oops, it's that. goes over here, my x on this one will be on the other side. So again, we have a mirror image like we did with a, so it's not equivalent. It has to look exactly the same. It can't be a mirror image, it can't be upside down, it can't be right side out. It has to be the same. Okay. So if I'm looking at just switching which side of the bubble I'm looking at, or I'm starting with, then the only ones that are equivalent are the ones where we're talking about the middle of the bubbles, the overlap, not the inside outside. And we can do this with a lot of different types, okay? If you think about, and I'm going to erase this in just a second. If you think about changing something else, okay? If I change, and I'm not going to break these out because I can show you over here. If I change the positive to negative, okay, if I say all SRP is my first sentence, and I'm going to find out if no SRP is equivalent, well, I can look right here. They don't look anything alike, okay, so they're not equivalent. Same thing here. If I change positive to negative, some SRP and some SR not P are not equivalent, okay, you can tell that right away from where the X's are. Um, now, so maybe we can change some other things around. If I have all S R P, and then I want to say all S R non P, one of those are equivalent. Okay? So I do my S and P, even though it looks like that. So if I have this S and P, okay? All of my S's are non-P's. What does that mean? That means they don't want to be in the middle. So these are not equivalent. So watch out for the non's. Um, they tend to mean complementary. Okay, so every time we make a statement, okay, all cats are carnivores. We're also saying that no cats are non-carnivores. See, makes that equivalent. Um, it's it's one of those. All the things in the world are either P or not P. All the things in the world are either S or not S. So we have that kind of this way. Okay. So if I have S, everything outside the circle is non-S. Okay. So all of my S's within here, everything else in creation lives out here. And so we're making categories, and that's kind of how we have to see this. So be careful when you're looking at 7.5, how those are written, and do your best to figure out how to put them on a graph. Um, I will tell you that using the Venn diagram system in Word um, is difficult because it shades everything. It's really hard to tell the difference. Um, either hand draw your homework and then take a picture, send it in, um, or you can take a picture, save it on your computer as a picture, and then insert it in your document. That's usually the best way to get things to work out the way you want it to look on Blackboard. Okay. Um, the other part of it is if you want to draw, use the draw um, symbols or draw draw shapes on Word. Um, you can go up to that place to insert shape and it'll give you a little thing to draw circles and those you can overlap and color in just a little bit. You can also do that on paint. Um, just make it non 3D and again save it as a little picture uh, PNG or JPEG. Those tend to work the best. Um, Blackboard likes them which is a big deal. Um, and so go ahead and do those and then again insert those pictures into your actual document and then they'll come across to me just like you made them. 
um, sometimes some of the other ways of doing it, where they might be faster, um, don't come across. I get these big blank pieces of paper. Um, now I have to send you an email and say, hey, I didn't really get the rest of your homework. Can you send that to me via email? Sometimes it works that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes it doesn't. So we'll have to experiment a little bit and see what works best for you. Um, be patient with this. Um, I'll be patient with you. Um, just be diligent in figuring things out. Um, best way, again, do it by hand. Take a picture. Embed that into your homework. Um, you can always drop things off by the office. Um, I'm in Wilson C 2046, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, so happy Thanksgiving.